Hi, everybody. Pastor Marilyn at Spring Valley Church of God, where we are encouraging families to live God first lives. Happy New Year to you, uh, to everyone. It is the year 2022. Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness. We had a wonderful Christmas and then a wonderful new year. And now we are ready for the beginning of a new year, the beginning of uh, receiving all of God's blessings and his promises, the beginning of strengthening our walk with God, our relationship with God by uh, worshiping him and learning about him, talking to him every day in prayer. Speaking of beginnings, today we're going to be talking about the beginning of the world as we know it. Did you ever wonder where the world came from and everything that is in our world? Like, where did the birds come from, the sun and the moon and the stars in the sky? If you said they came from God, guess what? You are right. Well, sometimes kids might ask, well, where did God come from? Who are his mom and his dad? Well, you know, God was here before our whole world began. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, all three of them were here in our world before our world was even made. Before God even created our world, they were here. Well, you might be scratching your head and thinking, <laughs> well, let me show you this. You see this circle? Can you find the beginning or the end of this circle? Nope. And that is how God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are. They don't have a beginning. They don't have an end. They were not born. They were always here before the world. Mm -hmm. No beginning, no end. They were, they are, and they will always be. So let's take a look in our Bible here. This is a children's Bible. It has the story of creation. I hope you can see these pages. We're going to be reading about the story of creation. One more important point I want you to know is that God created the world, meaning he didn't make things from different things. He created it. And how so? By speaking everything in our world into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke it all. God created the world by speaking it all into existence. If you could use your words to create something in the world, what would you create? <gasps> that is wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what I would create. There's so many possibilities, <laughs> but I'm sure I would figure out how to create something by speaking with my words, but only God can do that. He can speak the world into existence. And the third thing I want you to know is that God had a plan. He didn't just say, let there be sea, let there be crabs, let there be fish, let there be plants. He did everything in a specific order. He created days one, two, and three first. He created the light so that we can um, have all the different colors in the world and see. On day two, God created the skies uh, and the ocean so that we can know what time it is. We could have the days, the months, the years, the seasons. And God created the land and the plants then. Uh, he created a living space for us and all the food and things that we would need. Isn't God wonderful? Very wise. He had a plan. He made days one, two, and three first, and then all the rest. So let's get to reading about how God spoke the world into existence. You guys believe God, right? He doesn't lie, right? Mm -hmm. God is true to his word, true to his promises. So the beginning, Genesis 1. In the beginning, the world was empty. Darkness was everywhere, but God had a plan. God separated the light from the darkness. Let there be light, he said, and the light turned on. 
He called the light day and he called the darkness night. This was the end of the very first day. Then God said, I will divide the waters. He separated the waters in the clouds above from the waters in the ocean below. He called the space between them sky. This was the end of the second day. Next, God rolled back the waters and some dry ground appeared. He made plants of many shapes and colors. He made mountains, hills, and valleys. This was the end of the third day. God put a shining sun in the sky for daytime. He put a glowing moon and twinkling stars in the sky for nighttime. This was the end of the fourth day. On the fifth day, God made swishy fish and squiggly creatures to live in the ocean. Then God made birds to fly across the sky. Mmm, see all those beautiful fish and birds in the sky? What's your favorite kind of fish? I think my favorite kind of fish is the clownfish. They have such beautiful colors. And I love crabs because I love to eat crab legs and crab dip and crab soup. On the sixth day, God made animals to creep, crawl, hop, and gallop. Then from the dust, God made the most wonderful creature of all. Can you guess what God made? He made people. He made a person. Do you guys know, do you guys know who that first person was? If you said Adam, you were right. God named him Adam. On the seventh day, God rested. Oh, boys and girls, that is our story of how our world came to be. God spoke our world into existence. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they all work together as a team. Always remember, they were here before the world began. They were not born. They were here. They were, they are, and they will always be. All right, let's close in prayer, boys and girls. Repeat after me. Say, thank you, God, for creating our world. Thank you for the warm sun. Thank you for beautiful flowers and trees. Thank you for fruits and vegetables you give us. Thank you for warm, sunny beaches that we can go to. We can swim in them. We can build sand castles. You have made such a beautiful world for us, God, and we are so thankful. But most of all, we thank you for making our moms and our dads, our brothers and our sisters. And we thank you for giving us Jesus to make us all one family. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it's good to see you, and I'll chat with you another time. Bye-bye.